going to make some wine today, but as a, anything, you've got to figure out what you want to make. So we're going to be tasting some wine today before you make your decision on what you'd like to make. All right. So, <laughs> All right. <laughs> We are going to make the Chardonnay. We call it the Golden Pleasures. And pinch off where the juice isn't under here a little bit. Okay. Now we'll watch this real oh close. My gosh. I am going okay. to. <laughs> okay. I'm going to cut the bottom out and the juice is going to start coming out. <laughs> okay. Doesn't smell that. I wish we had smell a vision. Look at it and smell it and see what you think that might be. Looks like gravel. Looks like gravel. <laughs> Some people say it looks like kitty litter. Yeah, kitty litter. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have cats, but that is exactly what. It is. <laughs> Actually, that is bentonite, and that is the fining agent of wine. And there's speculation that that goes back into ancient times when people would have clay on their feet and found that that helped the wine settle out when they were making their wine. So basically it's gray clay that you're adding into the wine to help um, drop out the gray from clay. clay. Do I have to drink the gray clay? No, we'll filter it out later oh, for okay. you. So you and so it kind of, absolutely. Hey, we'll let you feed our fish after a while. <laughs> we have catfish. Now you're going to take the spoon that has been sanitized and you're going to stir the bentonite in. So you'll stir for a minute or two. This is tannin. And because we're not fermenting our juice on the grape skins, we need to add natural tannins back in. And we're going to do some more stirring. The next thing, we this is a Chardonnay. So the next thing we're going to be putting in is Chardonnay is lightly oak. So you'll be adding some oak chips. We use, we don't use oak barrels. We're fermenting in glass carboys and for our smaller batches. This is hydrometer and it will take different measurements and tell you um, different readings on the sugar levels and the viscosity of the, of the juice and tell you what your potential alcohol will be once your wine is made. It. If huh? I wanted it to be extra boozalicious, I would uh, leave look, out water. You know, leave out some of the water. Mm -hmm. Easy there, Chris. Okay, <laughs> this he said to pour it within about to that line right there. So, so now you get to be officially create wine. And the federal government, once the juice is sprinkled in, it is considered wine. Now there's a whole lot of different yeast products you can use out on the market. And just sprinkle it around. And it is officially wine. Ta da! We have to put a lid on. So I'll let you put the lid on. This is called a fermentation lock. I'm going to give you the puzzle to work. We have competitions when we have big parties, and you got to figure out how all that goes together. That keeps the oxygen out, but lets the carbon dioxide escape from in here. Well, so you've completed it. It's going to be going through its what we call primary fermentation in the bucket. After about five to seven days, it's going to be what we call racked or moved into a glass carboy similar to this. So you'll be bottling now. You'll take the bottle. You'll push it up under that and kind of give it a little tug and the vacuum starts. Kind of scoot the bottom out and it'll pull out and pull down. Now we're ready to cork it. And you'll have to give it a quick push when you get down near the cork. Yay! <laughs> go down. There you go. And then you can gradually turn the bottle. Great. With, so now you're ready to give it to your clients as gifts. Or drink it. Or drink it. <laughs> <laughs>